in your life that can cause you and call you to be bigger than you know yourself to be. And I'm 100% clear that that is possible for each and every one of us in this room. And it does not matter your political views, your religious views, any of that. What I know from my experience is that we have a mind that says, this is right, this is wrong. This is true, this is not true. Our mind gets very limited and puts things in boxes and separates. <clears throat> what happens when we allow ourselves to care about something is those boxes begin to expand. And who we are then begins to expand. When we hear stories of extraordinary actions, all extraordinary is is extraordinary. We relate to extraordinary stories because they're ordinary people who, in a moment of crisis, care deeply enough about something to take a great risk and then take an action from that risk. That's how we see them as extraordinary. It's kind of like superheroes in comic books. Superman would not be interesting without Clark Kent. <laughs> like if, there was no, if there was no Clark Kent, Superman would be a boring character. It's because of Clark Kent that Superman becomes interesting. It's because of Lois Lane that Superwoman becomes interesting. And there's a reason for that, and it's true for us, that there's something about being human beings and choosing to be greater than what we're told is right, told we should, told where our place is, told where someone else's place is, that the mind oftentimes limits, and more often than not limits, the greatness that we're capable of. Anybody who's been involved in any kind of intense sport knows that you actually have to push beyond the limits of the mind to achieve greatness in the sport. Because the mind says, okay, I've had enough, it hurts, I want to go get a massage and kick back in a hot tub and maybe have a drink. But that's the mind like, whoa! But we, you know, and it's for people who excel in a sport, part of the reason they're able to break through the confines of the mind is because they care enough about that experience, they care enough about that sport, they care enough about driving themselves beyond the limits of the mind that they exceed beyond the limits of the mind. <clears throat> so that's actually what What's Your Tree is about. What is it in your life, in the world, that could actually have you be greater than who you might have thought you're capable of being. What society might have told you is your place. What your mind might have told you is your path in life. <clears throat> I did not plan when I was five years old, although I loved climbing trees when I was five, and it ended up being part of my life. But when I was five, I did not be like, one day when I grow up, I'm going to go away with a tweet for two years. <laughs> like, that was not a part of the trajectory. And what I've experienced in my life is that what happened was I, I just fell in love with the redwoods. They were so beautiful and so amazing. And when I found out that over 97% of them have already been destroyed and that we're still cutting them down. And that the way we're cutting that last little tiny fragment, 3%, now closer to 2 the way we're cutting these last little fragments down, not only is destroying the last of the redwoods, it's destroying ecosystems, it's causing mudslides that are destroying people's homes. When I found this out, I just felt like I had to do something. And I didn't know what that was going to be, but I knew I had to do something. And the first thing that happened for me, though, was that I, I, my, the limits of my mind kicked in. <clears throat> and I thought things like, well, I've never been an activist, I don't know what to do oh, there's plenty of people working on this issue, I'll just let them do it. All those kind of not enough conversation came up in my mind, because that's what the mind does. And then <clears throat> what happened for me is, I believe very much in the power of prayer. It's not to a specific deity, it is to the universe of which I'm a part. And what I've experienced in my life is that for me, prayer is a way of asking a question and then getting an answer. So I tell people, no matter what your religious beliefs are or not, <clears throat> prayer is very powerful, but the biggest power in prayer is being willing to hear the answer. So, in this time when I was feeling like I needed to do something for the Redwoods and struggling with feeling like, well, who was I to contribute? What did I have to contribute? <clears throat> the answer that came to me in my prayers was, Julia, if you see an injustice in the world and you have the capacity to say and do something and you choose not to, your inactions are as much of the part of the injustice as the actions of others. And it came to me so clear over and over and over again. If we have the awareness to see that something is wrong, that something is hurting in the world, and we choose to silence ourselves and walk away, that inaction directly impacts our world just as much as the actions of others. 
and that's what had me go, okay, I have to do something. And I didn't know what, but I knew I had to do something, and so I just started moving in the direction of the commitment. The next piece for me that's important about this work is that we can't let the fact that we don't know how to do something stop us from doing it anyway. Like, I didn't, no one knew how to live in a tree for over two years. It had never been done before. I, I didn't know how to do what I was about to do. I just had a calling that was so powerful that I had to say yes to it, even though I didn't know where it was going to lead me. And I had to trust that saying yes to that was going to lead me in a direction and that with each step I took, I would get a little more clarity around where the next step was. So oftentimes in our life, regardless again of what issue you care about or what you want to do with your life, we will sometimes stop because the mind says, well, I don't know this, so I can't act. But the reality is it's kind of like if you're walking down a road and there's a bend in the road, you don't know what's around the bend until you walk there. So if you stand at this side of the road, on this side of the bend, and keep going, I wonder what's around the bend. I wonder what's around the bend. I wonder what's around the bend. <laughs> it still stays around the bend, and you still don't know. You actually have to move your butt in the direction of around the bend to see what's around the bend. And that's what life does. So I'm not negating the importance of, like, if you're at a university setting, like, we are here. There's a, there's a power that's possible in getting well informed. There's a power in information. It's a great tool to have in your toolbox. But don't let the times when you don't have the information stop you from moving in the direction of your commitment. Because my experience has taught me that when we say yes to something bigger than ourselves, we grow into it. <clears throat> Another example I use is one of pole vaulters. I like images and analogy. I'm a very visual and experiential learner, more than I am a reading books or listening kind of learner. So I try to share from the way in which I learn. In the image of a pole vaulter, a good coach for a pole vaulter knows where to set the bar. A good coach for the pole vaulter doesn't set the bar too low because the, the pole vaulter will never grow in their craft, in their skill, because they just easily go over the bar every time. There's nothing that causes them to stretch. But the good coach also knows you don't set the bar too high, because if you set it too high and you miss it too many times, the body knowledge actually says, oh, I can't do it, and so it never does. A good coach knows right where to set the bar so that the, the pole vaulter has to stretch their capacity. It is only in the uncomfortable that we grow. We never grow in the comfortable. We don't need to. <laughs> it's not necessary. So, even in this concept of like sports or in this instance of like a pole vaulter, it's like where do you set the bar in your life that causes you to stretch and grow outside of your comfort zone? And in that space, you begin to start having a life that's bigger than you know is possible for yourself. What we know is possible is very safe. It's very comfortable. Even when it's uncomfortable, it's kind of comfortable even in that. <laughs> like we kind of know this little world and even if we're a little upset with it, it's kind of comfortable all to stay there. But all changes always happen on the edge of comfort. It changes growth. Growth only happens in the edge of comfort, not in comfort. So this idea, what's your tree? What is it in your life, whatever it is you care about, that could actually have you stretch into an uncomfortable zone for yourself and explore it? You being here this afternoon listening to the crazy girl in the tree might be your you know, testing of your comfort zone. <laughs> I get that, it's cool. Like, some of you might be like, actually come in here and listen to you as a stretch, but okay, I'm getting some extra credits on my butts in the chair. Like, whatever it is for you, what I'm passionate about, in case you can already tell, is that I want all of us to be having bigger lives than what we have said is possible and what society has said is possible. And deeper than that, what I deeply care about is that we then use the greatness of our lives to make the world better for others. Every single right we take for granted today came because somebody else sacrificed for it. So many privileges we take today come from people we've never, ever met, who gave up their freedoms, and in some cases gave up their lives for things we don't even think about anymore. And we forget that each and every one of us are ancestors for the future. Every single one of us. Generations still to come who we will never meet. The lives they get to live is directly impacted by the choices we make. We create the future they're going to inherit. And I feel like as a human family, we're not living up to that calling. We're not actually...